day starts like this. It's got uh, a few worky bits in between. And then tonight, driving all the way down to Bristol to go and pick up Wilson's little buddy. Wilson, come on. <laughs> this feels like a really weird moment. Anyone who's had any parents who've had a baby uh, and then get to like a year and a half on and decide they want to have another one. And on the, on the eve before the new one arrives, this is how Claire and I are feeling right now. It's that weird moment where we, it feels like it's the last time it'll just be the three of us. <laughs> I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that best way to start a day, isn't it, buddy? <laughs> Get off. <laughs> right, I arrived at London Waterloo. Beautiful, beautiful day, of course. And now I've got to head across town to the Shard to go and give my talk. There's nothing better than London on a bright summer's day. Love it. Right, so another good talk done. Um, slightly weird one, that. Sat around a boardroom in front of, uh, I guess, probably 20 people which I always find so much harder than sitting or standing in front of a thousand people, which I do sometimes, so much more intimidating. Um, but anyway, that is now done. Amazing views from up there, by the way. Uh, amazing views of London. Such a cool, lovely day today in London. Um, I could have quite easily got the tube uh, across from Waterloo, but who wants to be underground on a day like today? So I get in the skateboard. Right, a successful trip to London. Uh, love London in the sunshine. There's nowhere better. I travel all over the world and I still maintain London on a sunny day it's better than anywhere else, I love it. Uh, anyway, that's done, now back at the station, back in the car, and I've never been more excited to have to do a 200 mile car journey, which is what I'm about to do right now, because at the other, e other end of that 200 miles is the new puppy. <laughs> I'm going to a hotel tonight, uh, stay over and pick the little guy up first thing tomorrow morning to bring him home. So excited, so excited to meet him. That was a long, long drive, um, <laughs> but I'm here now. Um, so I'm here all the way down as far southwest as you can pretty much go without falling into the sea uh, in this country of ours uh, to pick up the new puppy uh, early tomorrow morning, so Friday morning, 
Um, somehow, I've also been roped into picking up another puppy. So somebody who lives not too far uh, from where we do, up in Surrey, um, is also buying a puppy from the same breeder. So because I was coming down, I have uh, volunteered or been volunteered to pick the other one up as well. So when I go home tomorrow, I'm going to have two puppies in the car, which is going to be cuteness overload. Uh, but I am slightly aggrieved that it's taking away from this special bonding moment that I'm supposed to be having <laughs> the first time I meet our new puppy. Um, but anyway, that's what's happening. Uh, I'm super excited to meet him for the first time and take him home. Uh, can't wait for you guys to see him as well. He, I know he's mega, mega cute. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's, uh, <laughs> he's something that's going to be very special for our family. The kids are going to go crazy when they see him. Um, so that's all happening tomorrow. Today, though, has been a good day. Today's been, apart from the long drive, which is a bit dull, um, the sun's been out uh, in London. I was talking about um, data in Formula One and data, how data is changing the face, uh, changing the face of the world, obviously, but it's changed the face of motorsport over time. And um, I was talking today to people about how it's changed the Formula One industry throughout my time in the sport, how it changed my own role, my job. Um, how it's changed things like pit stops and transformed the way we operate the cars, um, you know, how we develop the cars, how we test the cars, how we measure the cars. Data has kind of literally ripped through Formula One, probably further ahead of most other industries, really, as most things happen so quickly in Formula One. Data and data analysis and data science has ripped through Formula One at an alarming rate and just generally transform the entire industry. Um, so I was talking to people about that and how when it first came in, when data science first became a thing in Formula One, the, the kind of the engineering staff, people like me, we turned our noses up at these data scientists that were being employed in Formula One and, and how we kind of ridiculed them and thought, how on earth are these kind of super geeks and nerds supposed to make our racing car go quicker? The only people who know how to make racing cars go quickly we thought, were engineers. Um, you know, they proved us wrong, and uh, the, the, the geeks and nerds uh, started to really transform things and show us how we could measure things more accurately and find things within the data to make, to help our, uh, you know, our, our companies and our cars and our races, you know, operate and work better than we could actually ever see just with the naked eye. And that's absolutely true. These decisions that are being made on the pit wall in Formula One, the strategy decisions, the idea of, you know, a little bit like in the Chinese Grand Prix when Red Bull made that call at the split second when the safety car came out to, to pit both of their cars and double stack them in the race, uh, change them onto the new softs, which ultimately ended up winning them the Grand Prix. Those decisions are not just being made by people sat on the pit wall in China. They're being made by those people in conjunction with a group of people back in Milton Keynes at their factory who are also you know, data scientists who are working in real time with that data that's being fed back as a live stream back to the factory. And, and people on the other side of the world are being able to make critical race decisions, strategy decisions, pit stop decisions, tire decisions, those kind of things because of the way we now are able to use data in Formula One. And, uh, one of the things I said in my talk today, because I went on to talk about Robo Race. If you don't know what Robo Race is, check it out. A fully autonomous racing car. Um, it's an, a fairly new project in its infancy, but driverless racing cars. Uh, love it or hate it as an idea. The technology behind this whole thing is absolutely mind blowing. And of course, hugely relevant to what we'll all be driving on the roads uh, or not driving, being driven in <laughs> on the roads in the future. So uh, really, really fascinating to talk to people about that. And it was really engaging because everybody there were, were people, CEOs from companies who are trying to revolutionize their companies using data analysis and data science. So they're trying to look at the way Formula One has done it um, and take some of those lessons back into their own world. So it was really interesting. I really enjoy that sort of stuff. I know it's a bit geeky and nerdy, but um, look, I could talk about Formula One all day long if people are happy to listen. <laughs> so, uh, so that's what's happened today. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, and by the way, just before I go, we have got a name for the new puppy. Do you want to know what it is? Tune in tomorrow. <laughs>